Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Easter. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. And um, yeah, here we are, another episode of building this model railway. Uh, in last week's video, I did a demonstration of road marking. And um, I've had a great response yet again in the comments section. Um, I did do a little post of whether the lines should stay or go. So, as you can see, the lines have gone. And the reason being is this layout is set in the 1950s, early 60s. And um, we had an example of uh, footage shown of South Shields, mainly King Street, in the 1950s. And um, I've gone with my gut feeling of removing the lines that were once here. And um, another comment I had was from George T, who told me or gave me some advice to look at a movie called Payroll. Uh, which was set in Newcastle uh, and uh, I had a look at that there was some um, clips on YouTube and yet, yet again even in the big city of Newcastle there was very very few road markings uh, only, a, only at junctions where um, there was the odd road marking so yeah it doesn't mean to say that I won't be using road markings, but only in particular places like level crossings, where I know in the 50s and 60s there was a line across, a stop line mainly, I think, and that's what I'll be doing now. But yeah, great feedback once again from you guys, and uh, which I do enjoy receiving. Right, so where are we at? Let's go over to Jarrow Road. A few weeks back, um, I made this water tower. And uh, as you can see, the light is now on. So I spent uh, an hour or so um, running the cables in to this water tower. If we look closely, we can just see the floorboards. Um, I didn't put any other detail in there apart from the floorboards and I think a poster on the back wall or something like that. But uh, yeah. So we're slowly getting some lights on now. And uh, as we head off towards the Jarrow Road station, you can see. The lights are on from this side. I, we didn't get a proper look, so let's have a look. Let's go peeping through the windows again. We can see the station master, quite plain to see. We can see all the posters and everything that were put up, banister rails. So yeah, there's, there's plenty to see there. Even through that little window down there, we can make out the the stairs and if we turn the camera a bit more we can just about make out the ticket office see the ticket office door we just about make out one of the counters um, yeah now the best views is looking down through the skylight see everything let's move around to the other side you can see all the way down to the floor Right, so what are we going to be doing this week? 
Right, I think we should focus on getting the walls up along the gradient wall there, along here. So, let's get started. I've made a little bit of a start on the wall. Um, it's not as long as you think. Uh, it's just under 900 millimeters. Um, it's it's not 100% um, straight yet, but I'm sure that will straighten up the more card that I add to it. Um, obviously, I've got my marking line there. That's the height of where the canopy will come out and obviously it'll go up a little bit as a uh, triangle so you won't you won't see that line so yeah and we have the joint at the other end just about make it out from here and here is the joint at the other end and if we look down on the joint you can see how I've kind of dovetailed the joint so that one card laps onto the other. So you can see in the centre the two cards in the middle which will put up and then we have a flap on this side as it were and another flap on that side. So when that's glued together it'll sort of be like a sandwich if you like. And uh, yeah, so this is the, the ridge of bricks which will go run along that line and then every so often we'll have a column of bricks going up all the way along every 60 millimeters. So that'll just add that little bit of detail along that wall because it does look a bit plain at the moment. And here we have the columns that I'm going to use to support the um, canopies. Um, <laughs> just noticed something here I might have to remove this fence because that corner there is smack in line for where I want to put one of these posts and then have these railings in between the posts so that might have to be a little alteration to come later so that would be in the corner and then we'll have the rest uh, about uh, 25 mil in from the edge. So yeah, that's the plan, and uh, we'll have to see if it works. Anyway, I just wanted to show you the progress so far. It's nothing exciting. Um, not like what we're going to have on this wall, where we have the windows, doors, and everything else. And uh, yeah. Uh, on that side um, so it's a very very plain wall meanwhile back at the bench I am cutting my brick columns which are 8 millimeters wide and 47.5 tall which is just the height of that uh, brick ridge line I was tell, telling you about just a minute ago. Um, so I've glued the brick paper onto some one millimeter card. I'm just trying to get this wall to line up smack in the center of the bricks otherwise it'll look odd. Um, yeah and then once that's done I shall paint the edges with my brick paint which uh, I've made up specially for this which is a, a mixture of a red and a white and I'll just paint them edges up and uh, yeah I'll be able to glue them onto this really long wall um, on that line so the first set will go so I'm working it out with 60 millimeter centers so that's where that one will go um, bear in mind you've got to make sure that the bricks line up as well. So I pre-did that before I stuck the card uh, or the brick card onto this 
paper I just made sure that the bricks lined up so you never know we might see it during a, a running session or something so yeah so that's what I'm doing at the moment and then what we'll do we'll fill in the gaps with the 1mm by 3mm uh, or 3 bricks um, in between and then the blue brick will run along the bottom and um, hopefully that will just give that a little bit of detail my brick mixture is just acrylics um, white and red I just kept mixing it until I got the right shade of red and um, it does look dark but you just let that paint soak in by the time you get around to do the other edge the other side would have soaked in enough then you just um, wipe it off with the old q-tips See that's it's drying out now, so it's it's gone more or less the same colour as the bricks. So there we go. So what I'm doing now is I'm just adding some blue brick to run along this lower line. Um, so well. I'm pressing it home against the brick pillow using my fingernail to push it right into the corner and then with the other fingernail I shall do the other the same this side and that pushes the card into each corner and then we'll get the perfect fit when we come to glue it in which case of lifting it up a little bit and then putting in the card glue run a small amount along there so it goes into the corner so I'm just doing one section at a time so yet again use my fingernail to push it right into that corner making sure it comes level with the base of the card and then we'll do the same there, just push that right into the corner. And then with a Q-tip, wipe off the excess glue. And then just check again, because you can tell if you're offline just by looking at the bricks. And then just push that back up a little bit, because I'm running a little bit on the lower side in this corner. There we go. Just use your fingernail, push that home and do the same there and then we move across onto the next corner doing exactly the same and then we should end up with something like that the brick pillars are coming along quite nicely so all I'm doing now is putting in a row of supporting bricks which hopefully give me enough lip along this edge to support the canopy when I get around to making it. Um, so what I've done is I've cut some um, brick paper and stuck it onto some one mil card and I've painted one edge. This edge will be facing down over and uh, yeah like I said this should help support the canopy when I get around to doing the canopy. I have now started to add some signage to the wall. Um, as you can see here, I've just laid them out for the moment. I haven't stuck them down except for the LNER ones because they're uh, sticky back um, signs from Tiny Signs. 
Um, I can't show you the, the full length of the wall because as you can see it's quite a long wall but what I can show you is the capping stone I have put on the end there. Obviously if I turn it up right all the sides will fall off but uh, I do have the other capping stone for the other side. So basically all it is is one mil card and two pieces of two mil card and I've put some sip glue right around the edge the reason being is I'm going to chamfer that on all four sides and then just use the scalpel blade to cut across um, so it looks as if though this is three separate stones um, you, you'll see uh, probably at the end of the video so that's the capping stones done so now we'll just stick on the transfers and paint the same capping stones that we've got here what I have used on this main station building so this um, capping stone should follow right away through onto the main station building as one piece as one wall and here I've been messing around with a, another wall um, this wall just goes around the back of the Birch Hall pub and heads towards the depot just using the Medcalf M0058 stone it's got to be capped off yet but um, it's left me with a space for another building maybe I could put another shop there or something quite a small space so it'll be a very small building anyway I thought I'd show you that but most of all I just want to show you this little pile of ballast here um, basically I just tipped out some ballast to get this shape and then obviously when I had put the greenery in um, this was sopping wet and I just let it soak a little bit at a time kept pouring it in, pouring it in until it went dry and then just dropped some 50-50 PVA water and um, glue on the top and it's created this nice shape of ballast it's probably been dumped there ready for the uh, railwaymen to um, change out some sleepers so I just thought I'd show you that little tiny detail Right, so let's have a look at another wall. What good timing. Just about to put in the finishing touches for this wall. So this piece of capping stone just bridges the gap that we have there at the top. So I've just spread out the glue a little bit. And this is it, this finishes it off. Right, so that's the wall finish. So let's have a look at the wall in its entirety. Just finish mopping up the glue first. And here's the capping stone we were talking about earlier, sitting proudly on top of its column of bricks and if I turn the camera around slightly you can see the whole wall in its entirety now it measures just over a meter it's not a very long station you can just about sit three coaches in there but yeah 
another job done. Yeah, it's a shame about the brickwork not matching the uh, each other here. I'm going to have to have a word with uh, Bob for that. Bob the Briggy. Right, so this week it's been like a game of two halves or a wall of two halves. We've done one half, so we just got to concentrate on the second half which will be a little bit more interesting because of all these large windows I've got to add. So, until next time everybody, stay safe, enjoy your modern railways. I'm off to go and watch England play. Thanks for now. Catch you again soon. Bye.